Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome back to Weld.com. Today we're gonna to build a couple different uh, variations of a third hand. So for those of you that don't know what a third hand is, it's something you can utilize if you don't have a shop helper, you don't have a man cub around where you're at. Uh, it'll actually hold the pieces for you just through weight distribution. So we're gonna go ahead and build a couple of those. I'm gonna show you how to fabricate. Uh, I mean, there's probably a hundred different variations. Feel free to build any design you want. I'm just gonna cover two of them today. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start building. Okay, so I'm gonna do is take this piece of three quarter inch piece of all thread and I'm gonna grind it to a point. That's gonna be the point that I'll use to actually set on the material uh, when we use the third hand. So I'm just gonna run this on the table, run the grinder back and forth, get a nice point on there. All right, so I have about a 24 inch piece of uh, one inch tube right, or one inch pipe right here. Uh, it's about an inch and a quarter OD and one inch ID. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend this into a 90 degree angle uh, because once this is done, it's gonna be kind of like a bird shape. We're gonna put little feet on here and the uh, that little, that'll be his pecker, his beak, you know. So now what I'm gonna do, I've got this bent roughly about 90, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, you know, especially for what it's gonna be. I'm gonna cope one end of it out to be able to accept a piece of pipe. And then this part up here is, um, we're, just, we're gonna trim that down. We'll take a look at it. Uh, I'm just going to go by, you know, how it looks, how it functions. I'll cut, I'll make a cut here and then I will uh, put that point into the top piece. Go ahead and get this off the table. You can reset up. All right, so I'm just going to find the, uh, the center of this pipe as, the, uh, as it's laying on the table. Because I'm going to just, I'm going to cope this out with a hole saw to be able to take that other piece. So that's, that's about straight and centered. Just a little love tap on there. Now I can see where the hole's at. I can go in with a, a bigger center punch and then actually make a punch mark for the uh, that drill bit. Okay, so for that I just use this um, inch and a half hole saw. Okay, it's pretty close to the, um, the diameter of this pipe. It's about an inch and a quarter OD. I usually go an eighth inch over but I didn't have a uh, inch and a half uh, hole saw bit. So I went up to inch and three eighths. I got a little bit of a gap. I don't think it's gonna make a difference, you know, especially for what this is. Uh, we should be able to fill that in. I'll just split the difference. Got about a 16th gap on either side. Should be good to go. You can actually take the grinder and just clean up some, a little bit more on the inside and get a tighter fit if you needed to. So I'm just gonna take these caps. We cut these out on the Queeky and just got them cleaned up with a grinder. It'll be little end caps. I'm gonna cap either side of this pipe off, weld all the way around it, and then just kind of do a radius uh, finish to it. It'll kind of look, it'll give it a nice clean neat appearance and then this will end up being welded to the center of the pipe. I'm already talking, you know, I'm probably going to trim it back to here. I needed that length in there so I can go from the roller to the, uh, the center of that die. Uh, but now I don't need that. So I'll probably take this over to the, the, the chop saw, the evolution we have over there, cut that off about here and then we'll insert that bolt and that'll be the point that holds everything. I'll probably have to cut the bolt down a little bit too. All right, so I went ahead and took all the mill scale off here just for the simple fact that I'm gonna line that other piece up here in a minute and I'm gonna be doing some welding on there. But then I'm thinking about probably painting this thing once it's done, except for the area that I need to have contact with the table so I can get electrical connection through there. Um, the rest of it's gonna be painted though. So we'll probably just put some blue painter's tape across the bottom when we paint it. Once I'm done, I'll be able to peel that right off. And that'll be the side that sits on the table when it's working. Okay, so that's about where it's gonna be. And I'm just gonna eyeball here and say, Probably cut it back here to this mark. So I have a uh, galvanized nuts on here. I, I just went ahead and took this to the grinder and knocked the uh, knocked the coating off of that. I'm just going to do some autogenous welding on this nut. This is just uh, the, the nut on this side is just to hold everything in place, so that way I can weld on it. It's not going to shift around, and then this will actually. Um, that little cap right there is gonna weld right onto the end of this, and I'll cut this down to size. That way, this is always replaceable. So, go ahead, put a couple welds on there, and uh, keep chugging along.
All right, so this is as far in as I can go. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this nut right here and back it out completely. And that'll tell me how much space I can have on the inside. And then that's how, kind of how I'll figure out what I can go back from the, the actual point of this piece. Remember, this one's interchangeable. This isn't too technical. I mean, I realize that nut's moving a little bit, so I might be an eighth, three sixteenths off. But I can have more sticking out of the, uh, the nose than I can have in, that, in the end of that bend. Two and a half inches to the end of that nut. I'll just mark two and a half inches from the top side of that point. All right, so I wanna set this piece here center. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off. This piece is now eight and three sixteenths of an inch. And divide that by two. Okay, that tells me my center is four and an eighth. You can figure this out in your head, yeah, but I wanted to give you guys a visual. And then the inch, or the, um, the outside diameter of my, my tube here is an inch and a quarter. So that's half of that's five eighths. So if I take center minus five eighths, it's gonna give me three and a half inches. So now I only really need to measure from one side. Okay, if I hit that three and a half inch mark right here, I should be good for this other side, which it is. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. I'll go ahead and get it tacked up, make sure it's squared before I start welding it out. I'll probably tag it up two or three spots and then we'll just weld that out and this one will be done. All right, so here's one variation. Um, you got a little bit of adjustment up in the tip here. You can screw that in and out. You can replace that. I'm gonna go ahead and show you another option um, that'll be adjustable as well. So let's go ahead and get to that. Okay, this is the second, third hand here in this piece right here that's gonna keep all, that's gonna have all the weight, all the weight distribution is gonna come from here. This is gonna be a four by four by inch and a quarter steel block. <clears throat> You've probably seen us use it in other episodes to hold material up or use it as a shim. Today we're gonna sacrifice it to build another third hand. So we have one arm on the top and then one set of legs on the bottom. So this is actually what's gonna hold the material that we, that we need held with, you know, acting as a third hand or holding something up for us so we can get a tack on it or a weld. That's gonna be this top piece here. Everything's gonna be secured with a little wing nut. We're just gonna bend pencil rod so it'll be adjustable. So this will kind of telescope in and out. So will the feet <clears throat> to a certain point um, and then the feet will come out kind of like this. One thing you can also do once you get done with this, you can sharpen your point or you can put uh, silicon bronze on this uh, and then you can put silicon bronze on the feet too and kind of use this as like your, uh, your, your work piece clamp for smaller items that you have to get in there, you have to get a ground to, the ground clamp's too big. This is nice to kind of pinpoint those areas. Also, if you're working on something that's next to bearings, uh, you can run that electrical current through the part, you know, so it doesn't have to travel through a bearing. Uh, it'll keep your bearings from arcing out. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to it. We're gonna start off by uh, cutting and bending some pencil rod. Okay, so this one you guys will be able to build without even have access to welding equipment. So this is all gonna be bent pencil rod. I got a bolt that's gonna go on here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find center. Okay, so I know this is a four inch block. And I know you can go corner to corner, um, but I don't, I don't wanna try that because I have rounded edges. If you had a centering head, you could use that, but I don't have one at the moment. So I'm just gonna center over or move over to the two inch mark. Use this. Mark All Pro, basically a Silver Streak pencil. A lot of people have been asking about that. It's a Mark All Pro. You can get them on Amazon. Get them on the Mark All website. So now I've got an X here. You might not be able to see that. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a center punch, and then I'm just going to drill this out, and then that'll make uh, way for this bolt right here. So it's about a 5 16 bolt, so I'll drill a 3 8 hole. I'm going to give myself a little extra space. All right, so to start this off, I'm just gonna cut me two pieces at two foot long, one for the top, one for the bottom. Probably a little bit more than I need, but I'd rather have en enough than uh, not enough, you know what I'm saying? I can always cut off what I don't need later. Probably only need 18 inches for the top. But... All right, so I went ahead and built this earlier. It's nothing fancy, it's just three pieces of this 3-8 stock. That way I'll be able to put it in the vise and it'll maintain that internal diameter because it's the same outside diameter. So whenever I go to bend everything, I can use that to keep my radius nice and tight so everything will fit together real smooth like. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just, I'll find center of this piece, heat it up, 
and then put it in here and I'll be able to bend this all the way around. So I'm just gonna mark out a foot. Like I said earlier, I have more material than I need. I'm probably gonna use, lose a little bit due to the bend. So they're not gonna come out exactly perfect, but I'll be pretty close with it. Close enough is good enough for this. I'll trim off any excess that I have once it's done. That way everything will be nice and even. So we have this cert or this side done so far. This is gonna be the bottom portion of the piece. So it's gonna sit just like that or like this somehow. I'm still up in the air of whether I'm gonna bend these down a little bit to sit more closer to the table. I think I wanna get everything else done for or first before I get into that, before I make that decision. Um, so I'm just kind of making this up as I go along as I've got an idea in my head and I'm just bending it to kind of fit that, <clears throat> that image. So I just did a 180 degree bend right here, kick these out about 45 and then kicked them back. And I think here I just measured like two, two and a half inches. Um, it's not very critical, you know, for what it is. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna build the top portion. We'll get that set up and I'll show you exactly how that's gonna work. And then um, we'll go from there and then I'll decide how I'm gonna work with this. I might even just bend it right here. I might come down with it uh, 15 degrees or so. Uh, we'll look at it and see how it looks overall and then how it functions and if I need to do any of that. And then I'll cut the ends off to make everything nice and even. Okay, so this piece was just bent at 180 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right here. This is what uh, is gonna allow it to slide back and forth on that bolt that's gonna go in between the, uh, the block. So I'm just gonna make a cut right here to kind of even that up. And then we should be able to do an assembly and then make any additional adjustments. I might have to tweak this rod just a little bit, but I'm gonna get rid of this excess material before I do. All right, so remember when I said I was gonna trim these down to where they'd be equal, I'm just gonna use a little square and I'm just gonna mark two points and then I'll do just two cuts utilizing that porta band And then they should be as even as we need them to be for this piece. So I'll throw this back up in the vise, cut both of these. We'll do a uh, test fit up. And then I cut these out earlier on the Queeky system. They're just inch and, uh, inch and three quarter by inch and a quarter pieces. They're gonna sit right over top of this. We'll bend the wings down a little bit or the outsides down a little bit. So it'll hold everything, kind of lock it in place. Okay, now we'll just kind of square this all up. Get it about where I need it, and that way I can bend these little tabs down over the side. Just It'll secure it just a little bit more. There we go. So I'll heat this up, just kind of tap it. This side, heat it up, tap it. Same thing here. And then I'll trim that bolt down. All right, so we got that side done. We're gonna flip it over, we're just gonna repeat that. All 
All right, so as you can see, it's you can slide this back and forth, whichever way you want to go. Same thing with the top piece. I'm just going to shorten it up. So depending on how big your table is, how, uh, how tall the material is, all that good stuff. Just snug this down. Now you get set up a little T-joint or, you know, whatever part piece you're working on. There you go. So magnets don't stick to uh, stainless or aluminum. So this is a good alternative to hold parts in place, you know, especially if you're working in a shop. Uh, if you have to, you know, set a nut on top of something and weld that or any, any other small objects, these third hands are just great pieces to have in your shop. You know, whatever you're working on, you don't always have somebody to, to hold the material in place. Like I said, some materials you can't use magnets. Uh, I like to use magnets a lot when I can, but that can also interfere with your arc. Um, you know, so having these third hands, I mean, it's, it's just a great addition to any shop, you know, whether you use them at work or whether you use them at the house. I uh, hope you guys found the video entertaining. Go ahead and try and make these on your own or make uh, different variations. You can post them up on our uh, weld.com and our Facebook group. You can post them on uh, Instagram, you know, tag us in it. We'll check it out and give you some feedback. Until uh, next time, make every weld better than your last.